Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you for joining me for today's video which is going to be my biggest style and fashion mistakes. So I've got eight different tips here, things that I've learned over the years on what not to do or what not to wear um, and I'm going to be taking a look back, giving you guys some examples and showing you things that I'm doing to correct these mistakes in my own wardrobe. I really hope that you enjoy it, hopefully you'll pick up some tips yourself and without further ado I'll get stuck into mistake number one which is wearing clothes that are way too tight. So in my efforts to pull off a very tailored look in the past I have often gone for clothes which are extremely form-fitting um, and often worn an entire outfit that in retrospect was just way too tight. So when it comes to trying to achieve a tailored look, I think that I've gotten confused with thinking that form-fitting clothes means that I've got a tailored outfit on and that's actually not the case at all. So having a tailored look means that your clothes, the design, the cut, are perfect for your current body shape and size. That doesn't mean that it needs to be too tight on the body. And I think some of the mistakes that I really have made a lot in the past have been I've worn really uh, tight fitting or form fitting clothes on the top as well as on the bottom. And I think in retrospect now, there's nothing wrong with wearing something form fitting. Um, but when it comes to separates, I think it's really nice to have a good balance. So if you are wearing a sort of form-fitting top like what I'm wearing at the moment, then balancing that out on the bottom with something a little bit more flowy or less form-fitting provides a really nice juxtaposition and balance to the overall silhouette. I have made this mistake a lot, especially in the office. Um, and thinking back now, you know, wearing a top like this with a tight pencil skirt, I think that can potentially send the wrong message in a professional environment. You want the focus to be on yourself and the work that you're doing, not necessarily your outfit or your figure. Um, another way that I've made this mistake is during the summer seasons. So wearing tops or dresses that are just way too tight and clinging against my skin it just means that you're going to sweat a lot and so now what I'm doing is I'm investing in clothing that is a lot more looser and relaxed fitting particularly for summer it's just going to mean that I've got a little bit more airflow and not going to sweat as much which is always a good thing. Mistake number two is when it comes to footwear and for me I haven't had enough of a variety of footwear and I haven't focused on comfort when it comes to shoes either in the past. So this is something that I've really been trying to consciously correct over the last year or two. Now for about a decade I would wear stiletto high heels to work Monday to Friday and then on the weekend I would either wear a pair of thongs um, during the summertime or sneakers. So my shoe wardrobe mainly consisted of stiletto high heels and I didn't always buy them in the right size for my foot either. Over the last few years I have been making a really concerted effort to expand the variety of footwear in my wardrobe with a very intense focus on comfort and this has resulted in me having a newfound love for flat shoes, particularly loafers. Absolutely love them. My Gucci Jordan loafers are really the most comfortable pair of shoes that I have and I also um, have started looking at different styles of shoes, particularly during the warmer weather, such as espadrilles and also open toe sandals. I think that these types of shoes just add a very striking and different element to say wearing a pair of rubber thongs, especially during the summertime. Now, I haven't given up my love for stilettos just yet. However, when it comes to heels, I'm shifting away from the stilettos and more towards heels that have a really solid block heel. I find that these are really, really comfortable and they're a lot easier to walk in than stilettos. So mistake number three that I've made in the past is not having a defined color palette for my wardrobe. Now there are certain colours that are going to suit you as an individual perfectly and that is going to be based upon your hair colour, your eye colour and your skin tone and also taking into account whether you're cool toned or you shift more towards the warm toned. The reason why it's so important to know which colours suit you best is because it's going to enable you to have a very defined 
color palette when it comes to your outfits. This is going to make not only getting dressed in the morning a lot easier, but it's also going to help you when you are identifying different pieces that you need to invest in for your wardrobe. Having a defined color palette in your wardrobe is also going to make tonal dressing a lot more easier. So this is when you take different shades of the same color group. So you can have different shades of blue in the one outfit or different shades of camel or different shades of green. It's just going to give a really elongated and streamlined effect to any outfit. And tonal color dressing is something that I'm going to be trying to do a lot more when it comes to creating outfits for myself in the future. I did just want to give you guys an example of what it actually looks like when we wear colors that don't inherently suit us best. So I've got two different knit tops here. I've got one in a really warm camel color and one in a navy color. I really feel that the camel color, which is inherently warm, doesn't suit me as much as the more cool toned navy color. So when it comes to color seasons, I am naturally a bright winter color season um, and the warmer my hair color actually gets then I shift in towards a bright spring however being very cool toned with my skin color and having a high contrast between my light skin color and my dark hair color and light eyes that means that very saturated colors like a navy blue which have a cool tone under base just bring out my features a lot better than what a warmer or more muted color like the camel colorway does. So this is just a really good example of how different colors can actually bring out our features or they can conversely make us just not look as bright as we'd like to look. One of the best ways to tell if a color is going to suit you is simply to hold it up against your skin. I know there have been countless times when I've been in the change room and I've been trying on a uh, similar item but in different colors and I can instantly feel when one color suits me better. So I think knowing your colors and having a really well-defined color palette in your wardrobe is something that is very important. So mistake number four is not recognizing the importance of neutrals. So I've recently begun to develop a very deep appreciation for neutrals in my own wardrobe and this is because I really have learned that they work as an absolutely brilliant base or foundation for creating outfits and they are also extremely versatile colors to have in your wardrobe. So when we're thinking of neutrals we're looking at colors such as black, white, gray, navy blue, creams, beige, camels. These are the colors that instantly present a really refined and sophisticated aura and they're colors that always look chic and elegant, especially when paired with each other. For me personally, I've discovered that one of the simplest and most worthwhile ways to invest in neutrals is to invest in neutral tones when it comes to the key basic pieces of a wardrobe. So thinking of things like outerwear, such as blazers, jackets, and coats, and also key foundational pieces such as basic t-shirts or vest tops, trousers and skirts. Having neutral colors in different key foundational pieces of your wardrobe is just going to make creating outfits so much easier and your look is just going to feel a lot more pulled together and elegant. So mistake number five has been when I haven't been open-minded enough to try new things and also getting stuck into a style rut. So a really good example of me not being open-minded enough when it comes to clothing has been I used to shy away from blazers. I just didn't think that they would work for me. I felt that they would sort of make me look a little bit older, um, but I've completely changed my mind about that over the last couple of years because I found some really nice ones from an Australian designer called Anna Thomas which I absolutely love. So I've got this beautiful one here in a lovely blue color and I've also got this one here in a gorgeous teal color with the lovely uh, silk bow which just adds a really feminine effect and I've also got this lovely pink one here which I purchased this year this is in a really lovely sort of tweed or boucle effect material and it's got really lovely pearl buttons and then this sort of the frayed 
um, edges here, which is really nice. So I think the great thing about blazers for me that I've discovered is that when I pop one of these on, I instantly feel a lot more pulled together and polished than when I don't have one. So really regret not being open-minded enough over the years, but glad that I have learned a very important lesson to just think of things that you normally shy away from, try them on and look for different ways that they can work for you. A great example of me being stuck in a style rut, when I think back over the years, I think it was because I would get, you know, quite dressed up for the office Monday to Friday. So when it came to the weekend, my off-duty look was always jeans, a t-shirt and sneakers. Now, don't get me wrong, I am still a total jeans, sneakers and tea kind of girl, but I have definitely been able to look at upping my off-duty wardrobe by including other pieces such as pleated skirts and shorts for the weekend. Another way that I've been stuck in a style rut in the past is getting obsessed with one particular item of clothing. During my 20s, I went through this complete obsession with Alana Hill embellished cardigans. Um, and whilst I still think that they're lovely, um, it was basically all I was wearing on the weekend was an embellished cardigan with jeans and sneakers or flats. So I was really getting obsessed and stuck with the same item of clothing. And I think that that really limits the type of outfits you can create if you don't have a very big variety of different styles. Mistake number six is investing in too many statement pieces which are just too extra for everyday wear at the expense of investing in core basic foundational pieces. So I've found that over the years I have definitely purchased way too many going out dresses. A good example I've got here is this red one I've had for a few years. It still has the tag on it. A lovely, lovely dress, but I mean, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not going out to different events every weekend and to have, you know, 10 different going out dresses when I don't really need them, but then not having enough of the core foundational pieces in my wardrobe, like a basic white t-shirt, I think that there's definitely has been an imbalance there. Some more pieces that I can show you, which are really statement pieces that I haven't gotten a lot of use out of. The first one is my pink uh, sparkle tutu skirt. So this is from Ted Baker and I purchased this on my very first trip to Paris. I just instantly fell in love with it. It is a midi length, um, beautiful pink tulle skirt absolutely lovely um, but apart from wearing it to the Bolshoi um, theatre to see the ballet in Moscow um, and a couple times to take some photos in Paris I really haven't gotten any use out of this skirt. It's something which I absolutely love don't get me wrong um, but I don't think it is the most practical piece. I could have spent the same amount that I spent on this on a blazer and gotten a lot more use out of the blazer. Another skirt similar to the tutu is this butterfly one from Zimmerman. You can see I'm a little bit of a magpie when it comes to statement pieces. Um, this one's lovely because it just does have this gorgeous butterfly effect and the little bow on the waist. Um, this again was purchased for a specific occasion in mind. It's definitely not an everyday sort of piece, but one that I want to try and get a little bit more use out of. But yeah, I just think I've invested a lot of money in statement pieces, going out sort of clothes that I'm really not getting a lot of use out of. So in the future, I'm going to be shifting more towards investing in core wardrobe basics, like simple t-shirts, um, just so that I can really get the most use out of pieces in my wardrobe. Mistake number seven has been not investing in quality fabric when it comes to different clothes. So when I was younger, particularly during my 20s, I'd purchase a, a lot of pieces that had a very heavy synthetic fabrication. So materials such as polyester, nylon and viscose featured heavily in my wardrobe. Now I try to focus more on quality natural fabrics such as wool, cashmere, cottons and linens. The fabric composition tag is one of the first things that I will check whenever I'm looking at a piece whether that's in store or online. The reason for that is because if I can find pieces that have a natural 
fabric composition, it means generally that those pieces are not only going to last longer in my wardrobe and their life cycle, but they're also going to look a lot nicer and feel a lot nicer against the skin compared to synthetic materials. So you might find that natural fibers such as wool, cashmere, cotton and linen might cost a little bit more at the outset when you purchase them compared to say polyester clothes. However, I think a great thing to keep in mind is, as I mentioned, not only are they going to probably last you a lot longer, but they're also a really sustainable choice compared to synthetic fabrics. And lastly, another thing that I've learnt about fabrics over the years is that when it comes to synthetic materials like polyester, they're really not comfortable to wear, especially in extreme temperatures during different seasons. So a great example is a polyester viscose or nylon knit will not keep you as warm in the winter compared to a wool or cashmere one. And conversely, wearing a polyester dress during the summer, especially a really tight one, which I have done before, it just is going to heat up your body a lot more. It's a lot more chic and classic to wear a cotton or linen dress like this one here in the summertime, which is a lot looser against the skin. It just means you're going to have a lot more airflow and it's just going to mean that you're a lot more comfortable during the really humid days. So the last and eighth mistake I've made is wearing too many colors at once. Now, I would always see photos of women who looked incredibly chic and pulled together in particular outfits. And I would try to recreate those outfits at home. And I'd pull together similar pieces and then I'd stand back and wonder, why am I just not feeling it? Like, why do I not feel as elegant or sophisticated as what I'm seeing in the picture? This is the reason why. So I've recently discovered the three color rule, and this is essentially where you can wear up to three colors in one outfit. And when I say outfit, that not only includes the clothes you're wearing, but it also extends to your footwear and accessories such as handbags. When I look back on certain photos of myself where I'm wearing a lot of different colors, I just feel now that it just looks a little bit too busy. When you limit the number of colors to three or less when you're creating an outfit, this emits a much more streamlined and polished effect. And this is because your eye is not going to be drawn to different competing colors of your outfit. So you might be wearing, say, a really brightly colored top and then a completely different colored pair of shoes, different colored bag. Your eyes are not going to be drawn to the different parts. Instead, when you have three colors or less, your eye is going to be more drawn towards the different elements of your outfit. So things such as different textures or different designs or the cut of a certain piece. Another thing which does tie into restricting the amount of colors that you are wearing in an outfit is considering monochromatic looks. So these are where you are essentially wearing the same color. And not only does this present a very refined aesthetic, but it also is very helpful for petite women who are trying to create the illusion of height. Because you are all wearing one color, it's going to blend in seamlessly and make you look a lot taller than if you have different colors in the one outfit. I'd love to hear which of these eight mistakes that I've made really resonates with you or that you find particularly interesting. So please make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comments below as I always love to hear everyone's different perspectives on things that I've shared here in my videos. As I mentioned, these are mistakes that I feel personally I've made that I've been able to hopefully learn from and that I'm looking forward to addressing and improving when it comes to my own sense of personal style. However, everyone's going to have different things that do work for them and that don't work for them. So yeah, just take everything here with a pinch of salt. But I do hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on if you enjoyed today's video and if you'd like to see more fashion and styling content from me in the future. I hope you guys are keeping well. A special shout out to all my fellow Sydney Slabbers at the moment. I hope you're staying safe and I'll see you guys next time with a brand new video. Lots of love. Bye.